Here's today's virtual warm-up. I'm gonna take Shane here. We're gonna start with what we call an eight-way lunge. It's just basically eight foot placements of a lunge. So I have Shane start off. You're gonna go straight forward. Let's go right leg forward. Then we'll go right leg to a 45. When we do this, we wanna stay square. So we'll get some internal rotation of this femur. Then we're gonna go side lunge out to the side. And then we're gonna go straight back with the right leg. Good, and when we go straight back, we're squeezing the glute. On all these, we're squeezing that back glute. So let's go ahead and hit the left side. Let's go one forward left. Let's go to the 45. Side lunge. And then straight back. Good. After we've gone through that lunge circuit, we're gonna have you get in a push-up position. And from here, we're gonna go into a downward dog. And we're gonna push the ground away to get there. We're keeping our glute core tight. We're gonna open up that posterior, also get these shoulders through some different ranges of motion. Good, and I have you stay down there. We're gonna start in a push-up position, but we'll just call it a plank. We're gonna keep the core tight, squeeze the glutes, and I want you to just flow back and forth from a push-up plank position to a side plank. So let's rotate out here. We're keeping the glutes tight. Good, and just come back and kind of slow down when you get to the push-up position. So refine your stability, come back out to a side plank. Good, find your stability, slowly get back out to a side plank. Good, and then we're gonna stay down there. And once we've gone through that, let's just do a push-up kickback. So I'm gonna have you slowly lower yourself in a push-up position, chest on the floor, and we're gonna squeeze our scap, really extend our shoulders, and then do a tricep kickback. Good, and then back up to the top of a push-up, and give me one more of those. Good, come on up to your feet. And there's today's virtual warm-up. Welcome to today's virtual circuit. I am LeCharles Bentley and I'm joined by Mr. Shane Lemieux. In today's virtual circuit, we're gonna hit three areas. Adductors, the glutes, and last but not least, what's called a quadruped position or simply a bear crawl type body posture. Why are the adductors so important? If we look at our game, we play a game that's based on angles. But while we're owning those respective angles, we want to make sure that our lower body is able to stay pulled in tightly. We don't want the knees flaring all over the place. So that's what the adductors are going to do for us. We think about the glutes. Our game is a strength power sport. You have to be able to establish, exert force. The glutes and the hamstrings are going to help do that. If you got weak glutes, you got weak game. Just is what it is. Then last but not least, once again, that quadruped or that bear crawl position, it's a base athletic position. If you're gonna struggle in a base athletic position like their bear crawl posture, that is gonna correlate or translate over to everything you do on the football field. So we're gonna do now is we'll start with a basketball, if you have one, if you don't, a soccer ball would suffice. But this is about the circumference that we're looking for. So what Shane is gonna do is start off with what's called an adductor hold. Gonna put the ball right where the knees are and we're going to try to squeeze as hard as possible. Now, you don't just drive into it, gradually increase the pressure. How's that feel, good? Good, nice and solid. Now we're gonna add a little bit of movement to it. So we're gonna go laterally. It's gonna have that same squeeze, but here's the caveat to this. What you don't want to do on the field or in the game, we don't wanna step and reach because right now, if you were to pick this leg up and try to reach it over, what you're gonna, the ball should drop. There you go, there you go, nice job. The ball's gonna drop. What we wanna have happen is to be able to move with the opposite leg in the opposite direction that we're intending to go. And while doing so, keeping tight with that ball. Here we go, take a couple, good. If you got somebody that can kind of push on it a little bit to make sure that you're actually doing what you're supposed to do, great. If you don't, just do what you gotta do. Now we're gonna get on the ground. We're gonna get those glutes going. Glutes is a very broad term. You say glutes, we think of just the rear end. Yeah, it is the rear end, but there's actually three muscles in play here. Take a look on the screen. You can see the three areas that I'm referring to. Good, now that we're back, what I'm gonna have Shane do 
is getting into just a basic glute bridge position. This is gonna focus on the glute maximus. That's where the bulk of your force is gonna be generated from. At this point in time, he's gonna come down for a few reps, making sure he's driving the heels into the ground. Now we get back to our basketball. We're gonna get the adductors and the glutes working together. We wanna make sure that the, sh the feet are right underneath the armpit. We don't wanna to be too wide. So here we go. Get a couple of pumps there, good. And then last but not least, get a little squeeze at the top. Very nice, good, good. Now we get rid of the ball and we get back to our trusty band. We're going to a hamstring position. So we're gonna anchor the band behind the knees. And now we're gonna get a couple of hamstring pumps in. The hamstrings and the glutes work together to produce force. Now, this is just what we have based on the world that we're in right now. Is it ideal? No, but it's better than doing nothing. So what Shane's gonna do here is a downward dog type position. He's gonna drive the knees back and extend. You should feel this in the upper hamstring region. Back down, one more time. Good. Now, if you're a bit limited in your flexibility and hamstrings, okay, no worries. Stay on the toe area as you drive the knees back. Here we go. Good, perfectly fine. It's not ideal, but it's a start. Now we get to the good stuff, some bear crawls. Again, it's called the quadruped position, but that's just, you know, the smarty art way of saying all fours. So no, 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 we need that, we need that. We're gonna make sure that these bear crawls are a little bit challenging. So what we're gonna do now is have Shane just get into that bear crawl position. The key element is this, engage the core first and make sure that that spine is not rounded. We wanna make sure it's nice and neutral. And so we're gonna take about two, three crawls north. So let's get forward, keep going. Good, good. And then let's go backwards. Boom, boom, boom. Uh-huh, good, right there, nice. So that's the bear crawl. Now what Shane's gonna do is face the camera. In the last movement, it was called a bear crawl breakout. So we're gonna get a little bit of upper body here and we're gonna get some core in. Here we go. Good, good, nice job. Last one there. The key to this is very similar to the lateral adductor walks. We wanna make sure that we're driving the body apart and driving it back to the midline. We don't want to get sloppy and get outside of the midline of the body. We wanna make sure that everything centers on staying tight in the core so you can be the best player that you can be. Hop on up, Big Daddy. And that is today's virtual circuit. Welcome to Virtual Mobility of the Day. Today we're gonna to focus on really uh, opening up that ankle flexion and extension that we've been working on in the past. So all we're gonna need here is a, I have a baseball here. You can use a racquetball or even a tennis ball, uh, whatever that kind of gives you this kind of size. And we got a couple bands with just different resistance. One is a little bit smaller, one with a little bit more. So all we're gonna do is have the athlete, there you go. Have the athlete get on down on all fours. And what we're gonna focus on is smashing out these shins. Right, smash out these shins. This is an area of the body that really gets overlooked a lot, but in terms of helping the ankle be able to extend and flex, it's important. So go ahead and get on there. And we're gonna keep the other knee on the ground. Don't wanna put too much weight on it. But all he's gonna do is kind of roll back and forth, even side to side. And when he, whenever he finds a place on that, on that outer lateral part of the shin, wherever he finds a place that kind of is painful, he's gonna stay there, kind of drive into it a little bit and then relax, right? So it's kind of like our version of a contract relax. And just try to open up these shins, which is gonna open up the ankles. So find a spot, you know, take about two to three minutes. You don't want to kill yourself. Good. Now switch it over to the left. So hit the right and hit the left side. All right, it's no good if just one ankle's working really well. Good, it's a little slippery, All right? find a spot on there. Don't don't try to put too much weight on weight on the ball right now, especially when you're using a baseball, it's kind of hard. And just find those spots. And all we're trying to do is open up those ankles because all this is going to do is allow some slack into the system, this lower body system, 
and allow the ankles to actually just be able to ex, ex, uh, you know, extend and flex the way they need to. Good, now after that, now we're gonna go to the, the posterior part of this, right? So we're, now we're gonna smash out the calves. So just go ahead and sit on your bum. Good, and you're just gonna, I mean, same thing here, you're just looking for spots. Looking for spots on that calf. Make sure you hit the lower calf and the upper calf. You find a place that hurts, stay there for a second. Try to like drive into it, contract into it, then relax, and then find another spot. Also, when you're rolling out, make sure we're going side to side as well. Really trying to allow those muscles, the muscle fibers to kind of just get a little more healthier. So make sure you hit the right, make sure you hit the left. If you need a little bit more weight, feel free to take the other leg, put it on top. And you'll notice, you'll feel when you start moving your ankle around, you'll notice the things are starting to loosen up. You'd be surprised how much this will help over time. Good, so we're gonna do that for a little bit. We'll give you some sets and reps on that. Now what we're gonna do, we're gonna stand up. Actually, we don't even need any bands for this one. We're gonna stand up, we're gonna do a little bit more like some active mobility. And all he's gonna do is he's gonna get on the toes. And he's gonna walk forward, just stand on the toes. All right, it's kind of extended here, a little plantar flexion. And what we wanna do is probably four trips about 20 yards of that. All right, after you get done with those, now we're gonna go dorsiflexion. So just active dorsiflexion. Maintain that dorsiflexion itself and just walking back and forth. Take it on back. Good. That's your virtual mobility for today.